Mm, hi guys. It is just a cold, nasty, yuck, depressing Monday morning here in the end times. I wonder why the hell I ever got out of bed on this goddamn uh, Monday morning, February 5th, 2018, I believe. So Monday is when I bring you my economic meltdown roundup ran. Good God almighty, guys, going on the finance pages each Monday morning for a the, the most honest picture, even more so than the science pages of how this planet is so fucked as we look at the various ways the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, bringing out all the stops to bring down a planet. And so once again, I'm in the middle of a three-part economic meltdown roundup rant. We just finished the stuff about the general economic picture and the stock market and jobs and all of that crap on part one. So now on part two, we are going to see what is on the minds and in the wallets of big oil, big oil, big gas, just big fossil fuels. And what are they up to uh, here in uh, 2018? And uh, so we're going to start out in uh, Southern California and what's left of the wilderness of Southern California. There's still the unbelievable amount of, of wilderness left in Southern California, which a lot of people don't understand if you just get a little bit east of LA. And so what do you think is, what the fuck do you think is going on in the wilderness of, uh, of California on our public lands? It's the same goddamn thing going on on every fucking acre of public lands. Public lands. Our public lands during the Trump scene. Yes. Wow. Never would have thought this. Mm. Did we hear this? Our version on my no shit Sherlock predictions for 2018. Trump administration now takes aim at protections for California desert. Trump administration officials have announced that they are now considering dropping protections for a vast swath of the California desert to open up more land, more of our protected public lands, to energy development. No shit, Sherlock. The latest warning is similar to the one that led to the dramatic reduction of protected land in the Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante National Monuments in Utah to provide drilling and mining rights to energy industries. The Federal Bureau of Land Management said in a statement that it is taking a look, a new look, at millions of acres in the desert region of Southern California to comply with Donald Trump's executive order last year to increase energy development on America's public lands. No shit, Sherlock. This is uh, announcing the review interior Department Deputy Assistant Secretary Catherine McGregor, quote, We need to reduce burdens. We need to reduce burdens on all domestic energy development. D, D, D. 
Uh, in, anyway, uh, I think we've been through various versions of this story. So with this, has that motherfucker, is, is he done yet? Where is he going to go next? I guess he's, you know, he's going after uh, BLM lands, of course. He's going after national monuments. I'm assuming we're going to hear about some fucking uh, gold mine in the middle of Yosemite National Park uh, before that motherfucker is finished. Okay. What is going on in Exxon Incorporated, Exxon Mobil Incorporated? Exxon sees limited impact on its business from climate policies. No shit, Sherlock. Exxon Mobil has told its shareholders that it does not think policies to combat climate change will have much effect on its business, and that demand for fossil fuels will remain strong for decades. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, uh, Exxon's report in, comes in response to pressure from shareholders who voted last May to urge the company to issue a report on the matter every year as the shareholders fear that policies to limit heat trapping carbon emissions will hurt Exxon's business of drilling for oil and natural gas. Yes. Um, so Brushing aside this unadulterated horseshit 2015 Paris Climate Agreement, Exxon said that even with that goal, the, the goal of limiting warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius, even with that unadulterated horseshit impossible to meet goal, the world will still need to invest trillions of dollars in oil and natural gas to meet increasing energy demand from a growing world population and rising prosperity. No shit, Sherlock. Exxon said more than 90% of its current proven reserves of oil and gas will be pumped from the ground by 2040 and will not be affected by any two degree scenario. No shit, Sherlock. The company did admit that some of its higher cost assets May, may not be developed, but energy demand will allow it to replenish its reserves, quote, for decades to come. No shit, Sherlock. There you go. Okay. And this is not just excellent. This is all of them. As we see the No Shit Sherlock headline, the U.S. oil boom is attracting Canadian drillers. Canadian oil and gas drillers are now moving their rigs to the United States in, to respo in, in response to greater demand for their services. <clears throat> there you go. No Shit Sherlock. In a recent story, Dan, blah, 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 uh, executives from drilling companies say that Canadian drilling companies are taking their rigs to the Permian Basin in Texas and the exodus from Canada will likely intensify. 
There you go. Oh shit, Sherlock. Uh, in the lower 48, drillers are getting closer to the 10 million barrel per day mark by the day, despite warnings that they might, quote, drill themselves into the ground if they don't rein in U.S. production growth. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh... All right, I think we get the point. Moving along. What is going on with oil prices this week? Oil prices flatten out amid rising U.S. shale output and OPEC compliance. No shit, Sherlock. Oil prices have seesawed over the past few days but closed out the week flat. Uh, high OPEC compliance and falling Venezuelan production more or less offset surging output from U.S. shale and an uptick in inventories. Oh, so U.S. oil production tops 10 million barrels per day. Hmm, the EIA you know those energy, uh, you know who those fuckers are. The EIA said this week that U.S. oil production surpassed 10 million barrels per day back in November, just shy of the all-time high set decades ago. There is a huge increase in U.S. shale oil from October, a monthly increase of over 380,000 barrels per day. The surging output is clear evidence that the shale industry is ramping up production at an amazing pace and could spoil OPEC's plans to balance the oil market. There you go. Meanwhile, U.S. crude inventories also jumped last week, the first time that has occurred in several months. No shit, Sherlock. And of course, what's uh, good or bad for the U.S. is good or bad for the entire planet. As I reported last week, we are seeing this shale drilling moving out of the U.S. It's going to start spreading out of the U.S. going all over the fucking planet. Uh, in the first part of this rant, I uh, kind of touched on this. Uh, this, uh, this story, this is another version of it. These charts may change the way you think about fossil fuel addiction. Where is this picture? Uh, this is probably a photograph from uh, somewhere. My guess is southeast Texas somewhere down there around Beaumont, Texas. I'm taking a wild guess. Uh, all right, as I say, I kind of touched on a similar story in the first part of this rant. To address these twin threats of climate change and ocean acidification, nearly every nation has promised to reduce their fossil fuel burning. But, so far, humanity just keeps burning ever more fossil fuels. Last year, we did it again, burning an all-time record amount. 
That's according to data complied from the latest BP Statistical Review of World Energy. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> the report highlights most of the important trends in global energy. Most, but one critical trend was nowhere to be found. Conspicuously absent was the basic statistic on fossil fuel that I, as a climate reporter, was looking for, just how much fuel is the world burning each year? Such a simple question, and the answer tells one of the most important stories in the world. Are we finally turning the corner on our fossil fuel dependency? Uh, anyway, uh, good God, uh, last year humanity set another fossil fuel energy record of 11.4 billion tons. In 2000, we were at 8. There is certainly no sign in this chart of a turning point in our relationship with fossil fuels. In 25 of the last 26 years, we burned more fossil fuels than the year before, and the only year in the, the miss it would be 2009, and we all know why that is. Sadly, there is no sign of a turning point in this chart either. Oh. And then they go to the next one. This chart says that fossil fuels continue to absolutely dominate global energy consumption. <clears throat> Together, these missing charts of BP's fossil fuel data ever rising amounts, increasing every year and maintaining uncontested dominance, paint a sobering picture of humanity's lackluster response to the growing threat. Okay, thank you. That was Barry Saxafrage from the National Observer. Okay. What was North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper up to? Uh, this week, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper said he had a good conversation Saturday with the Trump administration official over plans to expand drilling for gas and oil off his state's coast but added that residents need to continue to be loud and clear to make sure their opposition to Donald Trump's plan is noticed. Uh, this is uh, Cooper met with that fucking planet eater Ryan Interior Secretary Ryan Zink and told him that oil drilling off of North Carolina could cause unrecoverable damage to the state's three billion dollar tourism fishing industries if there is ever an accident. Quote, we told him there is no 100 percent safe method to drill for oil and gas off the coast, particularly in our area off of North Carolina that sees northeasters that sees hurricanes. We don't call it the graveyard of the Atlantic for nothing. It would be catastrophic if there were to be an oil spill. The Democratic North Carolina governor wants the Republican presidential administration to give him a similar exemption that was offered to
to GOP swing state Florida Governor Rick Scott. Okay, let's get out of our own country. Let's go over there to that save the planet country, Norway. Always uh, claiming that they are Norway. Norway uh, is, is the most planet friendly country on the planet. Well, well, maybe it is uh, because every country is fucking the planet. Okay. Greenpeace appeals after losing its Norwegian Arctic drilling lawsuit. Environmental groups launched an appeal on Monday this morning after an Oslo court rejected their arguments that Norway's oil and gas exploration in the Arctic violates citizens' right to a clean environment. Yes, uh, the Oslo court said a 2015 licensing round that granted offshore exploration rights to companies including Statoil, Chevron, and ConocoPhillips was acceptable under Norway's anti-pollution laws. Yes, that there is already enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to seriously damage our future, said Trolls Gulsson, head of Greenpeace Norway, in launching the appeal. He said Norway's oil and gas, when burnt outside of Norway, or in Norway, was stoking global warming. Okay, where is the hell is Turkmenistan? Turkmenistan, this is one of those shithole honky countries. Anybody who thinks shithole countries are uh, limited to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia uh, might want to look at Turkmenistan and those fucking shithole countries. Work resumes on Turkmenistan to China pipeline. <clears throat> Work has resumed in Tajikistan, wherever the fuck that is, on construction work on a natural gas pipeline running from Turkmenistan to China. Hmm. Funding for building is being provided by China. So the 400 kilometer section will carry gas onward from the shithole country of Uzbekistan through an area by the shithole Tajik town of Hyzor Blah, blah, blah. The pipeline has a designed capacity of 25 to 30 billion cubic meters of gas per year and will become the fourth uh, pipeline carrying the fuel from Turkmenistan to China. Da, 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 da. Moving on to Iran, to the shithole country of Iran. Iran can boost output, meaning Iran can boost its oil output fast if OPEC ends cuts, oil minister says. <laughs> Iran can swiftly increase production of crude oil if OPEC decides to scrap limits on global output when the group meets in June. Um, the oil minister blah 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 said, the Persian Gulf nation 
can raise daily production by at least 100,000 barrels per day within five or six days if OPEC decides that crude prices are high enough to justify abandoning its oil cut accords. D, 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 Iran has so far exercised self-restraint restraint in pumping to accommodate the group's decision to maintain the cuts. From Iran to Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> Saudi Arabia sets its eyes on Central Asia. Saudi Arabia seems intent to break new ground in South Asia. Uh, Turkmenistan is all in favor of the Saudis' assistance, which would finally help it alleviate concerns uh, with regard to its shrinking gas marketing possibilities. Um, anyway, um, now they're looking at, God damn all of these gas pipelines. Jesus, they're everywhere. I anyway, guys, I think we get it. Uh, let's go to I guess this is the technically the Caribbean Sea off the coast of Guyana as we see the French oil group Total or Total Oil buy stakes in offshore Guyana blocks. French oil and energy group Total has brought stakes has bought stakes in offshore Guyana oil production blocks, boosting its presence in the lucrative Guyana Basin. Yes, joining Exxon Mobil down there with their offshore oil rigs. But from off the coast of Guyana in South America to off the coast of Guinea, and the shit, the, the shithole country of Guinea in sub-Saharan Africa, we find oil tanker with 22 Indian crew missing in Gulf of Guinea since Friday. A ship carrying 22 Indian crew members and 13,500 tons of gasoline is missing in the Gulf of Guinea after contact was lost on Friday. The Gulf of Guinea has become an increasing target for pirates who steal cargo and demand ransoms. Do you think so? A search is underway. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is, we're looking at the question, after all of this talk about fossil fuels taking down the planet, let's look at a couple of articles to close this rant about renewables saving the planet. Asking the question, are renewables the answer? This is Professor Tim Garrett or they're from the University of Utah. Uh, okay, take it away, Tim Garrett. In a nutshell, it is often argued that there are two fundamental challenges facing humanity over this century, poss possibly running out of the easily accessible fossil fuels that support our civilization, and second, that burning these fossil fuels will lead to a less hospitable climate that supports our civilization. So, 
this would seem to pose the inescapable problem that if civilization does not collapse from running out of fuel, it will collapse from the environmental damages created by burning the fuel. The obvious solution is renewables. So, with a renewable revolution, is our salvation at hand? Okay, and I would love to break all this down. The answer is no, it's not. Uh, as there are two considerations in the renewables discussion that are rarely acknowledged. First, new sources of energy tend to add to past sources, and second, any source of energy simply enables civilization to further destroy its environment by powering its extraction of matter. Uh, and, and, and I would take this a step further than Professor Garrett. As I say, if, if, uh, if energy tomorrow, if, uh, if, if tomorrow we figured this out, fossil fuel energies were to end, renewable energies, uh, if we go play the tooth fairy game, uh, saved us all, there are plenty of other ways that civilization and this planet will collapse. All that, all that solving the energy crisis is going to do is going to just give us the other fallback ways to uh, fuck ourselves and the planet. But we're going to wrap up with a report from this uh, fuel billionaire over there in Norway, three reasons why electric cars are useless, are useless for combating climate change. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, uh, this would be a whole nother rant coming down to the inconvenient truth. When things are said as they are, many things that are done now get a huge question mark and that makes, and that makes decision makers uncomfortable. Why is this being done if it does not really reduce emissions. Yes. Uh, <laughs> electric cars saving the planet. Solar panels saving the planet. Windmills saving the planet. Carbon capture saving the planet. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Geoengineering saving the planet. That was Going vegan saving the planet. We are so fucked. There is no saving the planet. Anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap up part two of our little big fossil fuel roundup uh, right there and come back at you with just some uh, 
New World Order taking down the planet Flotsam and Jetsam. But I think my little dog, do you see a squirrely out there or what? Is that a squirrely? I think that might be a squirrely like that. Are you going to get that squirrely or not? Are you going to get that squirrely? You see, Pop, if you would stop ranting, I could get that squirrely like that. I could get that squirrely. Yes? Mm hmm. Would you stop your ranting? There's squirrelies to be had. You tell that squirrely like that! Yeah! You tell that squirrely like <laughs> I really wish y'all could have seen that one. Uh, he just did a backward somersault. Oh, knocked my damn camera over. Jesus.